Hello friends and welcome back. I'm Kelly and I am apologizing for being such a disappointment. I know in my last episode, I talked about how <clears throat> I was going on vacation and oh my gosh, I'm gonna make the time and commitment to myself to film, but <clears throat> I don't know if you hear this in my voice, but I got sick while I was on this dream vacation. Um, I still have like an ear thing going on, which is why I didn't do it because I lost my voice at some parts and then it wasn't, it wasn't a good scene, but I mean, I had the best, best time. We're gonna get into all of that. There's been so much Taylor stuff that happened while I was gone, but at the same time, it was really nice to just kind of rest and, you know, try to get better and just unplug a little bit. Um, but I was watching from the sidelines and I have, we have so much to talk about. I feel like we always have stuff to talk about. Like Taylor just keeps on feeding us so much that we always have a lot to talk about. So um, I'm gonna get into my trip in a little bit because Speak Now is out and it is just, I mean, this girl is, I feel like she, while she can write like the best songs in the world, she could teach like, you know, songwriting classes and all this stuff, like the marketing that she and her team do, it's just phenomenal. And I think that you know, I'm, gonna, I'm just gonna dive into some of my thoughts right now because, you know, one of the things that strikes me a lot with Taylor is that a lot of people, when they evolve and they grow, there are some aspects of ourselves that should go in a linear line, right? We should just be getting better. But then there are other things that are kind of cyclical and we always forget about that. And with Taylor, I see, well, I think I see a lot of artists, right? And you're just like, I'm growing, I'm growing, and I can never look back, right? I can never look back. But Taylor has truly embraced that looking back, right? I think, I don't know if it's just from her re-recording process, but kind of understanding where she came from, what those memories and those feelings felt in those specific times in her life, is you know really great and it kind of brings you back and it makes you feel that if you just became a Swifty yesterday, you could jump into that sense, that feeling of what things were like and kind of relive that. And I really and I really enjoyed that because I think a lot of times we grow up and you know we are very like, oh I came from this small town and I'm gonna shun it and I'm better than these people, or I'm so glad that I got out of there and I escaped it, or I'm not like that anymore. And so there's just so many elements of the Speak Now re-recording that have shown how much she's grown and where she is in her life now, but then also really embracing that past and like showing that piece of her to the world. Um, and so let's let's get into the details of what I mean. So. <clears throat> let's kick it off with Better Than Revenge, right? I did a whole skit about what do I think about Better Than Revenge. I did the like I did this whole kind of I did a TikTok and I talked about it in one of my last episodes about the ten things to know about Speak Now the original. And I said one of the most controversial songs was um, Better Than Revenge. And will she change the lyrics? And we find out yes, she did. She changed it to instead of like she's better known than the things that she does on the mattress to. He was a flame, a moth to a flame, and he was holding the matches, right? So, you know, some people aren't happy with that. Some people are like, it's a better lyric. Um, I think the general population is just like, it's a great song and I'm gonna listen to it. Um, but I think that it shows how she's grown, right? She's like, I'm not a 19, 20 year old who's like a little scathing. Um, and I'm not going to, I'm not going to put that lyric because I don't believe in it where I stand right now as, as a 33 year old woman. So, I mean, that's really great. Then you also have how she addressed the crowd when she did Dear John um, and talked about how we need to be kind on the internet and not to bully people and kind of really subtext is don't go after John Mayer. Like I was 19, I'm fine, I'm doing great and you don't have to defend me. Um, so that was really great. But then also like embracing the past of, you know, like 
the vault tracks, people that she, bands and um, artists that she really liked at the time and still likes to, to this day, but really kind of defined that period for her, putting them on the vault tracks like Fall Out Boy. Um, and then also with this Taylor Lautner and Joey King and, oh my gosh, Presley Cash. I want to say her, I'm so sorry, Presley, if I, Mrs. Cash, um, that I got, um, that was in, they were in the main video, which is really amazing because I'm sure a lot of people like me remember them from the main video, watched the, um, watch the I Can See You, which is really spicy, Taylor. I mean, <clears throat> if you, if you listen to Sparks Fly, you get a little bit of that spice, but like, I Can See You really like takes the heat up to like, you know, habanero plus side, but it's, it's great. It's awesome. And the fact that she's like bringing in an ex-boyfriend who was really supportive at that time and then bringing in people who she worked with in the mean video. But like I was saying, like, you're going to watch the, you're going to watch her new video because it's new and you're like, oh my gosh, Taylor's new song. And then you're going to go watch the mean video and say, oh my gosh, look at these people when they were so much younger. So that's just really great and sweet. And I love that because you don't really see a lot of people do that, right? You don't, you don't see people really embracing themselves of how they used to be 10 years ago or whatnot. Um, and I really, and I really enjoyed that. And I did this little rabbit hole because so on Instagram, um, and I'm not going to dissect everything because I think at this point, like I'm late to the game and, um, everyone's listening to it. And I think we all have really great opinions about it and it's doing so well. I mean, Spotify had it as the top streaming um, album the day that it came out. So um, it's really it's really awesome and really amazing to watch. But I just did this recent TikTok because <clears throat> I wasn't, in 2009, I wasn't like the biggest Swifty. I was getting married and, um, and whatnot. So that was like, I felt like I was a little bit older. And I, I mean, I still am older, but, um, but then after, after the whole debut of the video at uh, Kansas City, and it was really crazy that Taylor Lautner then posted on Instagram pictures of him and Joey King, who was in the mean video um, from 2009. And there was like a little caption that was like 2009 to 2023, right? And in that you saw these pictures and they tried to recreate like the pictures and the photos that they had and the positions that they were in. And a lot of people were commenting about how this was on the set of Ramona and Beezus. So I, I didn't grow up reading them. I don't know why I didn't read any of Ramona's. Um, and that was not in my purview and I was not like in that in 2009, but my daughter is so into Beverly Cleary right now. We have Ribsy right now. I have Ramona forever out of camera shot, but we're reading that <clears throat> and I'm looking at all these comments and I had no idea that there was even a movie. And then I find out that Joey King's in the movie. And then I find out that Selena Gomez is Bezos in the movie. And it's just like this like Taylor intertwined world. Um, because then I didn't realize, I don't know if I didn't realize, or I just, just have such a strong association of Taylor Lautner with Taylor Swift, that Selena Gomez used to date Taylor Lautner, and then Taylor Lautner was visiting Selena Gomez on the set, which is why he was hanging out with Joey King. I mean, it's crazy, right? So yes, so Selena Gomez and Taylor Swift both dated Taylor Lautner in the same year, and then um, Selena, they called it quits, uh, Selena and Taylor. Um, male Taylor, but um, there are articles where Taylor talks about how there's a lot of cross dating and overlapping of their friend group, but how the girls kind of, the sisterhood is more important than the guys they date. Um, so and obviously you can tell that this did not impact Taylor and Selena's friendship whatsoever. They're still friends, everything's great. But I love the idea that, you know, they were all together in 2009 and now they're still together in 2023. And then additionally, Joey King is also super good friends with Sabrina Carpenter and Sabrina Carpenter is going on um, tour with Taylor Swift for her international dates and opening for her. So it's like this whole like degrees of separation. It's just like, I love it. I absolutely love it. And then speaking with Taylor Lautner, um, you know, uh, a video that I have on TikTok that's like getting a lot of traction now is when I talked about um, the Taylor Lautner and his wife, Taylor. So there's the three, the three Taylors. They did this funny, like, um, Spider-Man, like 
you know, crossing, uh, pointing at each other. But um, the fact that Taylor, wife Taylor, is so like comfortable and secure in herself that she's hanging out with Taylor Swift. And I'm not, I'm not saying that she gets like a Nobel Prize for that, but it is so great to see like, to be supportive of other people and understand that like that was 10 years ago and just being happy for people and just seeing her so confident and so secure is just really awesome and beautiful. I mean, she's a, she's like a first responder during the pandemic. So it's just, it's just really awesome. So yeah, so lots of, I've been streaming, I've been listening to um, a lot of Speak Now. Obviously I listened to Last Kiss and I was in France when it came out. So, I mean, I'm not staying up. I know there's a lot of people who like wait until it's midnight and they start streaming and they're listening to all the stuff and whatnot. That is not me. I need to go to sleep. So I'm mostly asleep by 10 o'clock. But because I was six hours ahead, I was able to listen to it in the morning. So that was really nice as well. Um, but yes, I've been listening to Last Kiss and Mean, um, the Vault Tracks. I love the Vault Tracks. Um, what's the one I do like the when Emma falls in love, which a lot of people are speculating is about Emma Stone. Um, and it sounds very like Drops of Jupiter, which Taylor did cover. I think it was during the Speak Now tour, but yeah, it has like a job, Drops of Jupiter vibe. And I like, um, there's another song on the vault that I really like. Castle's Crumbling is good. I like Timeless and yeah, I'm just like, I like it all. I'm listening. I'm listening to it all. Um, and then, so speaking of which, I was talking about how I was going to start recording workouts to speak now once it came out. And I already have one up. I have Dear John. It's the, probably the, not, not the, not the first workout that comes to mind, right? You're not like, oh, let's listen to Dear John and work out. But it's up. And uh, I did ask for some uh, requests as to what should be the next one. And obviously I got Better Than Revenge and Sparks Fly. I think I got a couple more, but those are the two that I actually just recorded right before doing this. So they're gonna be up next and they're fun. They're definitely fun, right? I mean, I still like, I still have to finish all of Red. I don't have all of Red done. Um, and what's the other one? Oh, I, there's no more 1989. But yeah, I have a lot of, oh, I'm Fearless. So I still have so many Taylor songs that I need to get through even before like Rep and 1989 comes out. But, but yeah. So actually, let me talk about that for a second too, because, um, you know, we talk a lot about Easter eggs and like the Swift community and like, this is an Easter egg and that's an Easter egg. And, um, so I don't know. It's like, I'm not here to like crash anyone's fun or to like, calling one out or anything like that. But I feel like the word Easter egg is just getting like out of hand. Like every, everything is an Easter egg, but I think an Easter egg to me is like a hint of something that's to come that you don't know the real answer to, right? Versus like Taylor used to put messages in her booklets and that would give you, because she wanted you to look at the lyrics, but now, um, because more people are like visually, um, attracted to more like visuals that she's putting all of these references to other lyrics in her music videos so that you can understand her lyrics better. But I don't think that it's necessarily an Easter egg. Like, so for example, um, when she was in the vault and you see all those lines of how long that she was in there and a lot of people were saying like, oh, that's like 15 years, 15 million tears, like singing to my, my ear, pleading, pleading till my knees bled. Um, and like, I don't think that's a, I don't think that's going to be like a surprise or something. I think it's just a reference as to that song, It's Time to Go, has an element of how she felt about not getting her masters and that's how it ties back to the masters but it's not like some hidden clue that um it's going to reveal something it's just that it's letting you know that these are connected you know like those feelings are connected those songs are connected does that make sense but anyway what i do think is an easter egg is at the end of the movie you see that like 89 and everyone's like it 1989 is coming next 1989 is coming next and <clears throat> again like 
The other side of that argument too is that everyone knows 1989 is coming, right? It's not like a big surprise, but um, it's like that the fact that it's coming next, I feel like we've been getting so many clues, especially in the Bejeweled music video. It has a lot of 1989 references. Like there's just so many, but then people get like freaked out because like the week later, Taylor wears like a snake outfit. And it's like, I think, I think, she, I think at some point it's just so much that anything she does, people can just be like, oh my gosh, she's, she's in her, she's in her rep area. She's, she, and her, she's in this area. It's like, it's like, we just need, we need to all calm down, right? Right? Um, but anyway, so 1989, I think just going back to how I even started this video, this podcast today, um, is that because she is so good at marketing, I think it's really fun for the fans to speculate and to make Easter egg and predictions. Because I mean, I do it. I do it. I'm guilty. I think it's fun. I think it's totally fun. But I think just like my realistic practical hat has like, she has always given space besides like the whole Evermore folklore, which are kind of like the same album. I mean, it could have just been like, Evermore could have been vault tracks for folklore, right? It's not, it's, I don't really think Evermore and folklore are even like an entire era. I think it's just one era together. I think we can like the whole like cottage indie rock like stuff is one era, but, um, she always gives this space, right? Even Midnight's, so Midnight's was announced in October of 2022. Then Speak Now was officially announced in May of 2023. And then two months later, the album actually dropped. So to think that we are going to get 1989 in like a month from now, I just think it's, it's so crowded. It's just too, it's too crowded. I mean, right now you have Taylor on tour, Karma's on the radio, Cruel Summer is on the radio, and they're both top tens at this point. Um, and like Speak Now is coming out and like all these, you know, there's just so much music videos, all this stuff. So I think that if anything from now until maybe February, and I'm, I'll tell you why I think February, it's nothing big. It's just like, I think now until February, we're gonna continue to get maybe another Speak Now music video. I think we'll get another Midnight's music video and we're gonna take a little break during the holidays um, and just talk about the errors again. Then, because so Taylor's Eras tour ends in US ends in August and then she goes to Latin America, Mexico. That ends in November and then she comes back in February. So February, I believe it's Tokyo. It's like definitely Asia. I think it's Tokyo and then she goes down to uh, Australia. But I think that that's when she's going to announce 1989 when she comes back on tour and give 2024 like this hype. And then that doesn't come out, 1989 doesn't come out until like May, Memorial Day. And it's like the jam, the songs of, the songs of 2024 are just gonna be like New Romantics and Welcome to New York and Style. It's just gonna be all over again. So that's my prediction. <clears throat> um, we'll see how that goes, but, but yeah. So um, yeah, I think that's, I think that's, yeah, we're getting to like all this, all this stuff. Okay, so I am going to get into my Denver predictions um, right after a couple other things. I'm gonna chat about me for my for a little while, and then we're gonna get into Denver predictions for the Eras tour. Okay, um, so I talked about previously that I've been working on this Etsy store, and this podcast is called Defined by the Things I Love, and so it's the Etsy store. Um, and my coloring books have been doing well. I mean, a couple of like dad shirts and like some August sweatshirts have been selling. I did make a Speak Now coloring book, which is super cute. Um, and then I have some like Stone Harbor shirts because Taylor was seen wearing a Stone Harbor shirt, which is a town in New Jersey, a coastal town in New Jersey, which I personally love. 
Um, I, I've been gone going to like Avalon Stone Harbor for a while and they're both like beautiful, beautiful towns. Um, and Taylor wore one of the shirts, so I made like a Stone Harbor 1989 shirt. Um, and I like it, so I just wanted to pass that along if you haven't checked it out. And there's definitely a discount code using the word, the code folklore um, that I will link down below. Okay, and then, so I told you about my workouts. I told you I'm at Etsy store. Let's talk about this trip in France. Oh my gosh, like, so on my TikTok, I did a couple of videos. I think I'm gonna do like a reel on Instagram. I'm so like thinking about that because I like Instagram, but I don't like Instagram, like, you know, um, but, like so many Taylor songs I was able to use. Like I was in Paris and I did, um, you know, like obviously Paris and um, I did, we had like, we were picking up sea glass on the Mediterranean and I did like Sweet Nothings and like I did a whole Cruel Summer thing. Like, oh my gosh, like, but it was so beautiful. Started in Paris. I was there for three days with my mom, my sister-in-law, my niece and my daughter. Um, and we had the best time. I was not sick. And then they left and I rented a car. So, <clears throat> you know, I feel like I talk a lot about like, you know, brave, like be fearless and like whatnot. So I have that in my head a lot, but there's, while you can be really, really brave, there are sometimes that little voice inside you that you're just like, okay, but I'm actually really terrified and I'm actually really terrified and you rationalize it and whatnot. So part of me was really terrified that I was going to rent a car in a foreign country. Like I know it's France. I'm not, I know I was not going to like a super dangerous place. Um, but I was going to go to France and I've never driven in France. They drive on the same side of the road. So that's nothing. But, um, I rented this car. I drove over two hours. It was about like two hours, but the way I was driving was over two hours down to the Loire Valley, which is where all these beautiful castles are. And it's like the countryside. It was like Ratatouille, just like absolute Ratatouille in the beginning scenes of Ratatouille. Um, <clears throat> and I, you know, I'm renting this car and this woman, like at first she wasn't going to give it to me um, because I didn't have a credit card in my name and I was going to just use my phone because I was using my phone for everything, but they didn't want that. And then she was kind of like, do you want insurance? And you know, I'm like, oh, that's just like a scam. Like I own the insurance. I have, I have my own personal insurance for like my car. So I didn't get insurance. And she was kind of like, well, you know, we can fine you up to $40,000. So I just had in my head the entire time that I was going to get into this accident. Something horrible was going to happen. And this was me just being foolish and like brazen. And I shouldn't have been doing this. And I'm going to crash this car. And we're going to go into debt because I decided that I, we were going to go to the Laura Valley. Anyway. I think between like the travel and the no sleep and the mild panic attack that I was having about it, we got to the place, we went to a castle, we checked into our Airbnb. It was very lovely, it was very sweet. Um, and I just, I I was like incapacitated. I like I felt like a full on cold coming and I could barely get out of bed, but we had like a lot of food and, and my daughter was just like tired and we were all just like, cause we were running crazy over like around, Par around Paris, just like in the heat, it was hot, that we both just kind of crashed and I needed that and I felt better, but then it was just kind of like building. So anyway, totally fine, totally functioning. I wasn't like bedridden. Um, well rested, we went to another castle. She had the best time, we had the best time. Um, and then we went to Versailles, but then I returned the car. Nothing happened. Everything was fine. Like, and I have to tell you, like, I know France and French people get like a bad rap, but I can't even tell you how many people helped me on this trip. Like I got stuck in a toll booth because the toll, like the toll from the previous car didn't get down and I couldn't figure out what to do. And someone like got out of their car and called like the help desk and got me out of it. So appreciative of that person. Thank you, merci beaucoup. And then um, I couldn't figure out the gas because like I couldn't like open the gas tank and someone else came out and they helped me and someone at the gas station helped me. Really appreciate it. Everyone was being so nice. It was just like, thank you, karma. Thank you, everything. Everyone was lovely. But anyway, get to the airport and I have a flight on like a little easy jet flight from like Paris to Nice and 
during that flight, I think because I was a little sick, my ears just exploded and I just got really bad. And my, <clears throat> my, that's where my ear got really bad. And so anyway, that's why I couldn't record. Um, but yes, but then I met up with my husband, my mother-in-law, my son, we were all together. It was so beautiful. Um, I was able to enjoy it just like I was checked out this, I mean, I climbed this crazy mountain in Ez. I like sat in the Mediterranean. I went to a French pharmacy and oh my gosh, they're just so like the concierge service there of just going, it was like incredible. But, um, but yes, it was, it was a lovely, lovely trip. And um, I am also just glad to be back and chatting here with you. Okay, so I'm gonna wrap this up with Denver. All right, so Denver is this weekend. And um, so my first prediction is not that surprising. I just feel like she is on the Speak Now train and she is like full steam ahead. We gotta keep promoting it. And um, I love that she played Dear John already. And I, my predictions a couple weeks ago was like Dear John or Back to December. But now knowing that Taylor Lautner was in that music video, I think that um, she wasn't gonna play it when he was there because it's too closely tied. It was like the headlines would be like, Taylor Lautner comes and then Taylor sings a song about Taylor, you know, she wanted it to be about the video. But now that that hype is there and people have been listening to it and people saw Taylor last week, I think she plays Back to December in Denver and people are like screaming it back to her, like even more than before, right? So I think she's gonna play that. She's gonna play another Speak Now song, um, maybe a vault track. And then the next thing is, so this is a little touchy. Um, I talked about this, is that, so Taylor was, um, she was in Denver for her sexual assault trial. This is when um, a DJ from the Denver area grabbed her, there's photo evidence of it. She went on trial, countersued, he sued her for losing his job and damages and she countersued for a dollar, which is what she won. Um, and she, um, you know, which is why there's like that $1 bill in the Look What You Made Me Do music video when she's in the bathtub. And then, so when she did the rep tour, <clears throat> the year after the trial concluded, she addressed the crowd and talked about this. So I guess what I'm saying is that maybe she addresses the crowd and tells them, gives the backstory, maybe educates some newer Swifties or people, um, who may not have heard about that, but um, but anyway, when she addressed the crowd during the rep tour, she then played the song Clean, which on the piano, which I don't think she's gonna do since she's already played that twice, but I do think like a cathartic, like song about struggling through something difficult, like Labyrinth, um, somebody else, somebody on like the comments to this post wrote like maybe it's, right where you left me because she was 23 when that happened. Um, so that's a possibility. But yeah, I definitely think like a song, if she addresses that, like a song that kind of like relates to that is possible. Um, and I highly recommend you checking out Miss Americana where she talks about that um, because it really kind of like, it just gives you that information of what she went through. All right, and then lastly, so I mentioned Clean, and I, like I said, I don't think she's gonna play that, but she hasn't played a 1989 song, and then she just ended that video with a 1989 Easter egg, or clue, or whatever you wanna call it. Um, and so I think she's gonna play that, and my bet is on I Know Places. So, yeah. All right, well, thank you again for tuning in, and thank you for following along for working out with me, for commenting, liking, everything that you possibly do. Um, it's really, really awesome to like grow this community and to chat all things Swift and life and all those things. But um, all right, friends, I hope you have an awesome week, an awesome day, and I'll see you at the next episode.